Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? Thought I'd come out here. I figured out what it was I wanted to do last time on the truck. It wasn't nothing special, nothing big, nothing major. Uh, I want to try and get that nut off that uh, bottom shock bolt. But before I do that, um, I want to run through some things. It seems in my first couple of videos I was more concerned with the Kimball and videotaping and getting that all right and spitting out the right words and all that. And I just, you know, I, I've, I've edited my videos. I've uh, uploaded a couple and uh, you know, I didn't like what I saw. So, you know, I'm going to get better. I'm definitely going to get better. But I want to talk to y'all about something. Uh, some things... I want to talk more about the things that have been done on this truck that I didn't mention. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention uh, was the uh, fuel straps. That one right there. Uh, that's the rear fuel strap. And uh, I changed that out. Uh, both sides. Both sides. Uh, they were pretty rusted at the frame. Uh, as you can tell right now, the frame looks good. This is the new. These are brand new. Uh, this one and the one on the other side is brand new. And uh, I got to change the ones in the front, too. Uh, the rust got in between the, the frame. It, the bracket in the frame itself and, and spread it apart that type of thing and i just didn't feel comfortable with you know doing a dot inspection or something at the scale house so i changed the back ones out uh, a couple years ago and the front ones need it they're not like dire emergency or nothing uh but i have the two to change them out uh they're sitting in a box in the garage i couldn't get them brand new but they're in really good shape one of them's bent a little bit but i can bend it back no big deal and then i gotta sand them down and uh, paint them black uh but yeah so there's something i didn't mention you know the, the rear tank straps i've had to replace them both and uh that all went smoothly uh simply uh all we did was put a couple of four by fours uh, across the bottom, all the way across the bottom of the two tanks on, on the front side and the back side and, and drop the tanks down right on the four by fours because they still got, I mean, the tanks are about over half full uh, diesel fuel. Um, and so they just sat right down. I, I made a cradle on each four by four. Uh, and uh, like I said, it just sat right there while I changed the straps out. No big deal. Now, on the uh, front straps on the driver's side here, uh, let me bring it down a little bit so we can, yeah, that front strap right there, that strap's going to be a little difficult. That's got all the air lines running through it and you got to disconnect every one of them lines, every one of them to get that strap off. And I've got to put that, uh, as you know, I've got to put that, uh, if I get it, there we go, that, that stack over on this side. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to remove this tank uh, all the way out. Yep, I'm going to have to take it out and get it out of the way so I can get that stack in there and drill them holes. Four holes i got to drill in that frame to put that in there. So there's something I didn't mention. Um, and also I wanted to make it a little clearer on the, uh, on the uh, here I go again, left is right, right is left, up is down, down is up. Okay, on each one of these hubs, all right, each one. The hub's been changed out, the, the bearings have been changed out, the seals have been changed out. It's got new brake pads, got new hubs, new seals, new bearings, um, new uh, bolt, uh, lug nuts, right? All new lug nuts and lugs, all new lugs. So everything on the outside of the axle is brand new on all four axles, or uh, all four hubs. Um, and it seemed like, okay, and there was something else I wanted to go over with you. Let me see if I can put this down. All right, so we can see here. Looks like you can see all right. All right, so here we got, this is one of the airlines that I took off the back of the cab. And this is the other airline I took off the back of the cab. This, okay, this is a number six airline, hydraulic airline. Now, this, I'm telling you this stuff for a reason, because most people think they got to go find these pre-made. You don't. You can buy the airline, the hydraulic line, buy it in a roll. There's many feet as you want if you find the right. I found these at Napa. Uh, online, Napa, you can buy them. Some, most places online require a minimum feet, uh, 30 feet, 50 feet sometimes. It just all depends on the site, but some of them require minimum footage. Um, when you don't even need that. Uh, Napa, the site I found out Napa, I can by as minimum as I want. I'm not set to a maximum. Uh, so this is a number four. No, six. I'm sorry. This is number six hydraulic cable. And then you, you can get these ends separate too and they're easy to put on the hydraulic line. You don't need no special tool or nothing. That's number six. This is number eight. A little bit bigger. And this is the fuel line. This is one, one of the fuel lines. This is the short one. I didn't want to get out the big one. Uh, this is number 10. And again, you can buy these hydraulic lines in whatever size you need. Um, in fact, I'll give you the, the, how to Google search it. Or and what I like to use is DuckDuckGo. I like DuckDuckGo, but anyway, if you uh, search, I brought out my paper with me today. If you, uh, my, there we go, there we go. All right, if you if you research the number, where'd it go? All right there, H06910 would be the number 10 line, and if you did the H06908 or 06 or 04, that would be your, that would be that's the number to the size hydraulic line you want. So it's H069 and then whatever 0406 or 10 or 08. Zero, you know, you get what I'm saying. Uh, so that's how you find it online. Hydraulic line and then use that nomenclature and uh, you'll find it. Okay, so move this back um, so we can get the whole picture here. There we go. Left is right, right is left. Okay, and so uh, there's that. And that free all that I kept talking about the other day. This is the can of free all that I, that, it's eight bucks a can. Stuff ain't cheap. I get two of them at a time off Amazon. Um, deep penetrating oil. Uh, Old Two Stroker off YouTube, you can look him up, uh, OL Two Stroker, 
Yep, he's the one that, I never heard of this stuff before until he mentioned it and I started using it and it works pretty good. I used to use WD-40, I've, I've used WD-40 my whole life, but you know, WD-40 is not really a penetrating oil, it's a, it's more of a, it's a penetrating oil, but it's an oil more than it's a penetrating oil. It's more for lubricating and, and penetrating at the same time. I still use WD-40, but only to lubricate and penetrate. If I want to get something broke loose, this is what I use. So there's that. And the tool I'm going to use today is a Milwaukee M18 Fuel, this is the uh, three-quarter uh, drive, uh, socket drive, and uh, it's, a, it's an awesome tool, man. I, I'm going to show you. Uh, I can take lug nuts off with this one, off semis. Oh, yeah. Not the socket, but this, this tool. Um, I see there was something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, see, the thing's just... Yeah, I think I told you. I want to tell you about the strap. But today we're going to we're gonna work on that uh, that shock mount. I want to I work on that a little bit. I want to see if I can get that nut off, and I can get some more penetrating oil up inside that bolt. On the other side, I got the nut off the first time I tried it. And uh, I've been squirting it now and again with uh, penetrating oil. I'm going to squirt it again today, but first I want to try and get this nut off, because I've been squirting this side, too. So let's see if that penetrating oil made it possible to get that nut off, shall we? All right, I'm gonna see if I can set you up. Uh -huh. Let's see if this uh, will work. Oh, I don't think it is. Gonna... There you go. Okay. I gotta see what you can see. What am I gonna take off? Is that right there? Yeah, I guess you can see it. All right, cool beans. Cool beans. All right, let me grab a socket. I hope there's enough light for you to see. I can't tell. But we'll find out. Oh, come on, get on. There we go. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. Well, as you saw in the video, my camera fell when I was trying to take that nut off, so I had to regroup. Uh, went and changed clothes, put on some pants and a t-shirt. Uh, I'm just kidding with y'all. This is actually a week later. <laughs> camera did fall, and... Uh, I actually started, I continued to take a video at that time, but remember, if you, eh, you ain't gonna remember because I didn't put it in this video, but I had to delete everything after the camera fell because the camera actually turned upside down. Even though I'm looking at it and it's showing me straight up and down, vertical, the right way and everything, it was filming upside down. So that, from that point forward after the camera fell, everything was upside down. So I had to delete all that. I couldn't use all that. Then I didn't have time to remake the video uh, or do a new video or anything like that. I had, I had to get ready to go to work and I've been at work uh, ever since I just got back yesterday, last night I should say, and... Uh, yeah, so here it is Saturday, and uh, it's been raining all day, and good Lord decided to quit raining, you know, open up the skies, let the sunshine come out every once in a while, and so I uh, figured I'd come out here and finish that half that uh, I, you didn't get to see because I had to delete all that upside down video, but here we go. Okay, so first thing I want to mention is I made a big mistake, big mistake, and uh, it just shows you, you know, my ADHD uh, was working overtime that day, and uh, I'm trying to get to, I want to do these videos right, I want to make sure they got good content, it's very important to me. Um, uh, it's important to me that you, so anybody watching this video right now stays interested, that's very important to me, I don't want to be boring, um, or anything like that, so... That said, I showed you this power tool earlier. On the, it's earlier on the video. This is actually a week later than I'm talking right now from the first part of the video you are gonna, you're gonna, you've you already watched. Okay, this is the tool I showed you earlier. And I called this a three-quarter. This is not a three-quarter. This is a half. I grabbed the wrong tool out of the, out of the bag. Didn't even pay attention. Wasn't even thinking about it. Just took it for granted. This, however, is a three-quarter. It's got the three-quarter to half-inch reducer on it. And here's the same nut that I was using before. Now, this is 1,750 pounds of torque. This one will take off lug nuts. This one probably would too, but it would overwork it. This is the one we're going to use today to try to break that nut free. Now, I don't know where I'm going to set up the camera so you can watch me do it, because where I set it up before, it didn't work out too good. So, I'm going to just do the best I can. So, let's go work on that now and see if we can get you set up. I got my pipe down here already, this, because it's kind of wet. It's not real wet. It's just, it's, it's a, it, it's, it will rain today, so... Just to keep them getting dirty or whatever. I, I ain't worried about dirt, but, you know, just stay a little dry. Whatever. Okay. Um, suppose I could put it right here somehow. Yeah, maybe if I use the same thing I was using up here. Maybe I can use it down here. Let me find out, shall we? Bear with me. Let me put it over side right there. Don't know if it's tall enough. But let me get down in there with the tool and find out if you're seeing what I hope you see. We gotta raise you up a little bit. Okay. I can see the nut right, right here on the screen, so I'm gonna raise you. Oh, you back down just a tad. There we go. Alright. Now let's put the big boss on here and see what happens. Oh, 
you tell me my battery's dead? You gotta be kidding me. I ain't even used this thing in a while. Yep, seems the battery's dead. Can you? <laughs> I can't wait for losing. All right, let me go get that other battery. See if that battery will work. why that battery's drained, but that thing doesn't seem to want to move at all. We're gonna say it's on four. What is it? Oh, it's okay. I don't know how long this battery will last. You gotta give it a shot anyway. But hopefully it'll do the trick. We'll find out. Oh, heck. You're just going to have to bear with me. All right, all right. Maybe if I put a little heat on that nut. Oh no. There we go. Alright, let's get back set up down here. Just having all kinds of problems this morning, this afternoon. There we go. Let's see if There is a worst case scenario to this whole thing. This bolt is uh, slid through uh, the mount, all right? And the mount is connected to a plate, this plate right here. I don't know if you can see it when I point to it. I don't know, I can't see it on the camera, but there's a mount right here on top of the uh, leaf spring. And that mount plate, the mount is, bolt is welded to the plate. It's part of that plate. So worst case scenario, I break these two U-bolts loose, which I'm almost thinking about doing anyway, because there's a little bit of rust on there I don't like. And redoing them U-bolts. So if I have to, I'll just take them U- I, I'm thinking about doing that anyway, just because there's so much there's not a whole lot of rust, but there's more than I like, you know what I mean? So I, m I may just, worst case scenario, I'll just take them, cut them U-bolts off and uh, clean everything up and then uh, take that plate and shock and mount and everything to, to a bench and then work on it that way. I don't know, we'll see what happens here. I know this propane ain't gonna get this thing hot, hot like a torch would, but or acetylene torch wood, but it may get it hot enough. I've used them before for bolts, for, and they work, or it works, I should say. Just don't hope I run out, of, I just hope I don't run out of propane before I get it done.
Man, what did I do with my... And I left my socket out there, didn't I? Gee whiz. No, I didn't swing right there. All right, cool. Getting pretty red, for propane anyway.
got a reduction tool. I showed it to you guys on another video. I'm gonna have to give that tool a try. Oh, excuse me. So let's go get that tool, shall we? If I remember right, yep, that's in here. See what this bad boy will do. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm gonna look into it. I think so. It's a one inch drive, I need the handle. Hmm, I'm gonna need this. longer I may take this with me take this with me take y'all with me too let's go sorry about that now let's get the that sucker's warm I'm going to use this. Ah, shoot. Hold on, fella. There we go. Where'd it go? Let's, oh. There we go. Now we need this on there. There we go. Let's get it under there. Don't know if I'll need this or not, but I'll keep it close by. Make sure I got y'all. Yeah, sorry about that. Ouch. There we go. Like I said, I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to give it a shot because we need to do something. This is the best tool I got for now. I don't even know if I got it set up right. Oh, I think I'm gonna need that board. Of course, my eyes are magnets. I gotta get dirt in them.
Yes. I'm just going to hit my head eventually. It's okay. Oh. Let's go get some channel on This ain't going to be an easy job, is it? That's okay. We'll get it. We'll get it. If this two don't get it, I'm going to have to get a torch. I found it. It has become a nice day out there. It's about 70 degrees, between 70 and 75. Ain't too hot. Ain't too cold. And it ain't raining. Man, I'd like to get you guys up a little higher. Well, I don't know how I can do it. All right, let's see if that works. Dang, come on, Jason. Slow your roll, buddy. Kind of hold up a little bit because I got a lot of pressure on there. But it's got to exceed 1,750 torque pounds because that's what that tool was doing. It's got to go up 1,800 to 2,000 maybe, I don't know. I forget, I think it's tool, I don't know, I can't remember. Quarter. Let's see if we can find one. Because that channel, it works, but it's getting harder and harder. We got some big wrenches in here. Let's see if we can find one. I think it's three quarters. I'm not sure. Oh, wait a minute, I got all the big wrenches. Shit. I'm going to have to go get another three quarter. Seems like that's too small. Now we'll take these two. That's all there is until I break out my tool. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully this uh, 15 sixteenths fits. Inch and a 16. I know I don't have. I'm gonna see what I do got, but I'm pretty sure I ain't got no inch. And I got seven eighths. I think that's as big as I got. I know I, I know I ain't got no inch. I know I don't. I know I don't. Seven eighths as big as I got. That's at least an inch. Not an inch and a 16. Hmm. 
too many people carrying around and some bigger rankings. But looks like I may have to get some. There's an inch. I'll take it out there. Dang, it's got to be a short one, don't it? <laughs> yeah, there ain't no more. But we do got bigger channel ups. Oh, and we got one of these. All right, let's take that. that oh, that's going to be just big enough, too. Not too big. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. Big old adjustable wrench. Somebody said it's called a worm wrench. That's weird. But that's called an adjustable. I've been calling it, I'm 52 years old. I've been calling it a adjustable wrench my whole life. 52. It's hard to believe. Oh, let's see. Down a little bit. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try the ranch first. I don't think. There we go. <laughs> yep, there's one inch. I'll be dang good. I'm gonna see if the, uh, Got more leverage. I'm gonna see if I can get this on there better. Yeah, that's up. Oh boy, maybe not. Cause it's too long. All right, let's go with this. I got a feeling when that nut breaks loose, if it does, it's gonna be free. <laughs> kind of what happened to the other side. Once it broke loose, it, it, it just it was free. This ain't gonna snap back or anything like that. It's not. It's not made that. There it goes. Something probably broke the nut. Broke the nut right off of it. Or not the nut. I'm sorry. It broke the uh, three quarter. The half inch reducer. Man, oh man, that nut is on there. That sucks. Well, it didn't break my tool. In fact, it broke the, one of the cheapest things that they could break, so that's good news. I have to get that out of there, but the socket's still good. Now, see, I got the nut off on the other side. Came right off. I'm gonna leave that almost all the way up because I'm gonna spray it with some penetrating oil. I'm gonna have to talk to some people about that one. That sucker's on there. And I can't really get a pry bar in here. Besides that, I don't think that's gonna work either because that thing, this thing right here, I forget the torque on it, but it's that's more than any pry bar I could get under there. <laughs> I'm gonna probably, and let, let me tell you something, this uh. Oh, Chrome Vandium, uh, made by, oh, I forget their name, but good tool. Oh, come on, what's the name of the tool? Oh. There it is, Textime. It's a good company, I, I buy a lot of their tools. They're, they're really strong, really strong. That just shows you all the torque that was on there. That's a lot of torque. Well, I'm gonna get that penetrating oil before I forget about it. I'm gonna go back under there and spray that bolt that's on the other side. I'll take this straw out. This is the new one. Where's my other one? Hmm. It's probably, probably in the cab. That's okay. Got it. Use it. Come on now. There we go. That looks like I have to buy another three quarter to half driver. Are you serious? You ain't gonna stay up there? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, looks like I have to buy another three quarter to half inch reducer. I'm gonna take that inside the barn here in a minute. Oh man, I hope that comes out. Yeah, it'll come out. Take it to the barn here in a minute after I spray this. 
Come on, come on. Jesus. Pan, the side needs to be cleaned up. Looks like it'd be all right. This uh, steering rod, it's pretty solid. Just needs to be cleaned up. I don't know about the tie rod ends, though. But, I mean, I didn't have any problems steering it when I went down the road. It held true to the road. It, I could let go of the wheel. And it goes straight down the road. No problem. So, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Just needs cleaned up. All right, let's take this in the barn. Yeah. Let's see if we can uh, break it loose, or get this piece out of here so I can save my socket. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Now, what you normally do is you pound it out from the top. That makes more sense. All right, now I got it. Wait a minute. That's too long. Oh, I need a rod. Yeah. I need a man. I hate to ruin them. You see, I'm gonna go down through there. Either. Wow, it's smaller than that. There it went. That was easy. <laughs> Didn't have to work that hard. I dropped it down here somewhere. Not that I care that much about it, but I take care of my mess. So, wow, a cigarette. Nobody in this family smokes except for my wife and my son. Well, both my sons smoke. And one comes in this garage all the time. Or the barn, I should say. So that's probably his. I'll make sure he gets it back. Mm -hmm. I smoke cigars, by the way. I don't smoke cigarettes. And just because I know some of y'all are going to say, well, I still smoking. Eh. Smoking this store-bought cancer stick, which I shouldn't even say that. This chemically-filled tobacco. Man-made, chemically-filled tobacco. And smoking and puffing. Puffing, because smoking... Let's just call it smoking. But what do you do when you drag off this? You put it into your lungs and it goes all into your system. Uh, my cigars are all natural. They're not sprayed with any chemicals. There's no chemicals in them. They're grown all natural. It's been proven. I, I, trust me. I, I'm into health 100% and, and not just what we have been told is health. My cigars are expensive, but they're healthy. There's nothing about them that's bad. I don't inhale. I know. A little bit does get in there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not stupid. I don't inhale. And I don't smoke cigars that are filled with chemicals. Mine have no chemicals in them whatsoever. They're all natural rail. They make cigarette tobacco that's all natural. My wife smokes it. My son don't. This is not all. This is, this is crazy. This is bad, bad mojo right here. So I'll make sure he gets that back. Now, here I am got, getting off on a, look at that, still square. Still good. Didn't hurt it at all. Now, I still got to find that thing on PC. I hurt it. Maybe it didn't land on me. Maybe it landed on the ground. Landed on the toolbox. In that case, it'll be there for years and years. I don't need it. I just like to take care of my stuff. Oh, here it is. All right. Here it is. Yep. So I'll have to get a new uh, reducer. So just to be fair, I broke my mother-in-law's hammer. <laughs> so I am a man of my word. I have integrity. I am honest. That's one thing you can always count on, on me. If I say something wrong, you feel free to correct me. I will apologize for it. I will correct it. I will make it right. I will not lie. I will not cover up. I will not deny. I broke my mother-in-law's hammer. I did tell her about it. And I did tell her about it. Anyway. Okay, so we're done in here. Well, shoot, what are we going to do now? Well, I might as well leave that on. i got to bring her tools back to her. Put her, put her tools away, put her tools. Well, i got a metal pile out here. Let me see. If, yeah, right there. You see it all up against that barn. I know some of you are thinking, what are you, stupid? I know. You know what it's drawn? It ain't drawn no snakes. At least I ain't seen none yet, but it has, sure has drawn some bees. I do plan on taking care of it this summer. I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to pile it somewhere else. Out in the middle somewhere, not, not near the barn. And uh, I might just put it over here, but I don't know. But I am going to take care of it this summer and kind of separate the aluminum from the steel, you know, that kind of thing. So, for now, I put little things like this. Let's see if we can get you... Oh, first time I went the wrong way. Yep, right there in that, what we call it, right there behind here, there is a pan, and I throw it right in there. I've been actually doing good with this Kimball today. I've been doing the right is left and left is right and up is down, down is up, and that was the first time I made that move. Okay, anyway. All right, let's, uh, let's get Grandma's tools. I think this is all I got of hers. Yep. I'm going to put them in the barn. I know I'm doing... 
the stuff that probably ain't interesting to you, like putting these tools away. Most, most video guys wouldn't even do that. They just say, well, end the video today. We'll see you later and then go about doing their job. But I'm trying to get better at my videos. So I might as well continue on. And then when I go to edit it tonight or tomorrow or whenever I edit it, I can decide then if I want to keep it. And trust me, there's going to be a lot of stuff in this video that I probably ain't going to keep. But, and there we go. And I still got to get my intro video done. And I, I think you got to have more video made before you can get that. Anyway, all right, let's put that tool away. Well, you know that's a tough tool when it breaks that three-quarter to half-inch drive button off. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can see good. Okay, cool. That's a good tool, folks. I would highly invest it. They're not even expensive. Less than 200 bucks. Well, that one did. That one cost me less than 200 bucks. There's a bunch of brands out there. You just have to pick whatever one your heart desires or whatever one your gut tells you is the right one. I picked that one because it, it just seemed... I'll be honest, they all look the same. They all seem the same. The quality, if you read all the numbers on them, they all seem to have the same specs. So, I mean, why pay 300 bucks for one you can pay 150 for? Just, just do your research and... I forgot that other piece. Nope, that definitely goes there. That definitely goes there. And I forgot that other piece. I knew I was forgetting something. Now you see it laying down there, so where the hell is it? Makes me think I left it up under there. Shoot, because I don't see it. Ah, oh, dang, damn it. Well, oh, oh, there it is. Oh, glad you're right there. Glad I didn't have to get back down there and look for it. Oh, I look forward to the day I get this cab over back on the road, and guess what? First trip, you're going to win. Indeed. Indeed. I'm going to tell you all something now. I'd be doing a lot more on this truck if I had one time and two money. Now, money's coming. Now, you guys, what do you mean money's coming? Well, if any of y'all are truckers watching this, you know we have these drug tests, right? I mean, safety meetings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a safety meeting, and, well, let's just say... Uh, I failed some safety requirements, and so I've been, I started driving back, I went back to work driving truck, uh, last Tuesday, uh, 14th, and, uh, 14th of May, or June, yeah, we're in June, June 14th, mid-April is when I screwed up, okay, and, uh, it was about a week after that that I no longer could drive truck, until I completed one of their programs that they wanted me to complete, and I completed the program and got my okay to come back to work, and so now I'm back driving truck again, and I make good money where I'm at, I really do, um, unfortunately I'm driving somebody else's truck, instead of this bad boy right here, but, what can you do? Um, I made a lot of bad decisions when I was younger, and it seems like as I get older, I make better decisions, but I think back and wish I'd have made better decisions when I was younger, because now I'm in my 50s, and, you know, I, I don't want to drive a truck until I'm 84, and I, I see a lot of guys out there still driving in their 70s, and I met a guy that was 84 driving a truck. Didn't have a, he had a home, but his wife died, and he didn't have no reason to be home, so he just lived in his truck on the road and made money move, going from place to place and sleeping. You know, I mean, that's fine, because that's his life. He can, I mean, that's his choice, but that's not what I want to do. I want to enjoy my life. Um, after trucking, um, I, I, I don't won't mind still being involved in trucking. I wouldn't mind being a, a company owner, or a fleet owner. I just don't want to drive for the rest of my life. Um, I wouldn't mind sitting at home making phone calls, you know, that kind of thing. I want to be at home. Uh, not here either, but at home. I want to be at home, and I want to wake up at home, and I want to go to bed at home, and I want to be at home doing many things that I've got planned for, you know. Um, and if that includes dispatching three, four, five, six, seven, four, how many trucks? Three is kind of my number. If that includes dispatching three trucks from home, great. If I got to drive to meet them once in a while to do something, fix something, take care of something, then that's fine. That's part of being in the trucking business. But I don't want to get up every day and leave home to go work for 8 to 12 hours, 14 hours a day, and come back, go to bed, do it again the next day. As it is, I take that camper that's behind me, uh, on the other side of this truck, I take that to work Sunday night, and I don't come home until Friday night, because I just stay down there. I, I work an hour away, so it don't make no sense to drive back and forth every day just to go to bed and get up and do it again. So, I don't want to do that forever. I don't. But I make good money where I'm at, and I'm driving a good gas truck. I'm driving a truck that belongs to a good friend of mine. And uh, there's supposed to be a truck I'm buying in about a month, hopefully. But I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm looking to buy a truck, not, not, yeah, another truck. This truck is too old to go where I work. So I can't take this truck with me, even if it was roadworthy right now. But there are trucks I can buy for cheap for, the, for another year. It'll last a year or two, three, whatever, until I get this one completed. And I don't plan on taking three years. I plan on having this one completed other than the road, or the motor rebuild by the, before the snow falls. I plan on having this roadworthy so that I can drive it to Ohio and drop it off and let that guy rebuild my motor. And after that, it will be done. Done. Won't have to do nothing again except maybe paint it, which I'm not in, even going to paint it for... I don't know if I ever... You know, went sometime. The top's going to have to get painted, but I'm not worried about repainting it. I'm, I'm just not. It, the body's fine. Paint jobs, I like that scheme. I do have a plan in my head to paint it. I'm military, so uh, if anybody former military, or even if you're not former military, but you know you're in the military now or whatever, but you know about military, you know about the BDUs, right? The camouflage. Dark green, light green, brown, black, them camouflage clothes. I'm thinking about painting that one day. That 
pattern. And then painting every, the, well, the frame's already black, but then getting out rid of all the chrome and painting everything black. Everything black except for the cab will be BDU, battle dress uniform is what BDU stands for. That camouflage from, since Vietnam until they just changed it in 2004 to Desert's DCU in 2004. And then again in like 2009, I think it was, they changed it to that awful color. And then now it's, uh, it's multicam. So I know a little bit about it. I wasn't in the military. But anyway, I'm getting off here. Let's put this tool away. No, come on, camera. Don't, don't freak out. Just stay right there. <laughs> Can't bounce around too much. I want you guys to fall again. There we go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, well, let's put the torch away, shall we? That didn't do nothing. That didn't do nothing, did it? Not a damn thing. It's not really made for doing stuff like that. It's more for brazen. No, I'm not a brazer. At least I never have braised. I think this is burnable trash and this can go in the box. What the hell is that? Oh, wow, I didn't know that was there. Ha! I'll show you something I just found. If you can look, if you can see if I can get this camera. Look down and over. I don't know if you can see that right there. You should be able to. It might be too dark. I don't know. There's a, there's a rubber uh, uh, plug. It's almost plastic, but it's rubber. Yeah, I didn't know that was there. I wonder if the other side's got one. I guess that's if you get water in the bunk. Oh, come on now. Get this thing all. There we go. I want to put Nope, it don't. But you know, it's got a hole right here, and I can see right through it, so that's probably, probably why they don't have it. Alright, now take care of my tools. Yeah, first I'm gonna take care of this stuff right here so I can set you down. Probably set you right here. No, 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 no. Oh, well, that's alright. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my tools back to my truck and then I'm gonna give you a little tour of my camper. How's that? Because in one of my other videos, if you, ever, if you watch all my videos, you'll hear me talk about a camper. And, uh, I'll tell you, I bought the camper for, for the same reason. Not the same reason. I bought the camp, camper for, uh, because, like I said, I go down to. Uh, hour south of here to work all week and instead of staying in the truck because I'm back to the yard I, I, I run three to four runs on a pretty much dedicated route and then I'm, I'm back to the same place I started out that morning that afternoon so instead of sleeping in the truck or hanging out in the truck I, I bought that camper and that's what I hang out in while I'm down there all, all week I don't know what I'm sitting down for let's take this in with me to remind myself that I need it Okay, let's see if I got anything. Oh my, I'm taking them with me. Okay, put this in my pocket. Get this. Make that other cans up in the cab. Man, I wish there was more we could do right now, but <sighs> I gotta wait for parts. Once the parts start coming in, I just want you to move a little bit. There we go. Once the parts start coming in, there'll be more. Video. There'll be more work to do. A lot of work to do. I got butt connectors to put them, uh, hook up all them wire lights to, you know, hook all them lights up. I need butt connectors to do that. I need them parts from, the, you know, the rear that, so I can get my airbags to work. Um, what the heck am I missing? Uh, I want to put uh, lights on the back with mud flaps. I, the, there's those. Um, I still got to get them shocks off. I got to get them brake chambers off. Um, I got to get uh, the new shocks put on, the new brake chambers put on. I got an oil warmer filter that goes on the other side that I need to change out. I got the new one in there. Um, I need to clean off the uh, frame, spray the frame, wash the frame, and then uh, paint the frame uh, from from right about here forward. The rest has already been done, so just uh, just do that much. And uh, so I mean, those are things. And plus, I gotta buy, you know, this, the stack mount. It's gotta go there. So I gotta take the whole tank off to do that. Well, while I got the tank off, guess what? I'm gonna change that front strap. So that's gonna be a big job, but it's gotta be done. I can do it. It all can be done. I don't know what I'm gonna do to get that nut off that shock right now. Um, I need a torch. I need a acetylene torch, and that costs money. Um, but I already know what it's gonna cost. Uh, actually, I don't know what the acetylene's gonna cost because I haven't checked on that, but the oxygen, I don't know what that's gonna cost. Uh, the torch tools, that's 350 bucks, I think, for the, the, everything you need. I don't have it, so I gotta buy it brand new. I have propane tools, head, uh, torch, all that. Uh, even that gets hotter than that can I just had, but uh, I don't know, it might work. I, got pro I can get propane's cheap, you know. Uh, I just need to spend $400 for a down payment on the oxygen tank and then 50 bucks for the tank itself. And then when you empty it, you bring it back and pay another 50 bucks and you get another tank. Um, so at that point, you're just paying for the oxygen, which sounds stupid as hell, but that's what you're doing. Uh, all right. So, I mean, there's lots of stuff to do. And I want to get it all, oh, and I got to order all the, uh, all them lines, air lines, uh, hydraulic line. 
different variety of sizes. I need to order all them and install them. I left that door open. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's plenty to do. Uh, I just ain't got the money right now to buy any of that stuff that I already mentioned. Now, the, the frame I could do, because I got this green stuff, Aspo. I can spray the frame. First, I got to wipe it all down. Uh, but i kind of been waiting until I get, because what I'm going to do is all them parts down there, with the exception of the, uh, the uh, brake chamber, are going to be cleaned up, sprayed, and painted. So, uh, that's a lot of work, but I mean, that's, I'm going to do it. Uh, only, but I'm going to wait until I... <laughs> Here's another job i got to do. If you look at one of my other videos, you'll notice there's a plate on the motor, on the back of the motor, that leaks oil real bad. I need to try and get that plate out there. Uh, I'm scared, because if it breaks a bolt, you know, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Uh, you're making a not-so-hard job turn into a ridiculously hard job at that point. So I don't know. I may just leave it, because really, all I'm going to do is uh, get it roadworthy anyway, and then drive it to Ohio. So... I don't really need to do that plate. I can let them do it when they rebuild the motor, which will be easier for them at that point. So, yeah. So, you know what? I'm just rambling now, so, you know. Oh, I was going to show you all my camper. That's what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take my tools back. One at a time. And then I'll pick up the rest later after I show you all my camper. It's a little dirty on the inside, but, you know, I live, on, live in it, so I, haven't, I didn't clean it up for the video, so. <laughs> all right. So, this is the side. You can't, I can't zoom out, so. I put them on all new lights. I think you've seen them. No, nope, maybe not. There you go. Yeah, I think you've seen them. All them up lights up there. All the lights around the top are brand new. LEDs. Uh, the tail lights. Changed out both of them. Because they were old style. And they half of them worked, half of them didn't. And, you know, when I got to taking them old ones off, I couldn't believe how cheap they were. They just, so wonder if any of them worked. Oh, and I put this, uh, that rear light, outside light on, and it works. All right, here we go. We're going to walk into my camper. Now, I can't see exactly what you can see, but I'm holding the camera. In the direction that we're walking in. All right, there's my bed up there. Nothing fancy about it. It's comfortable. I sleep nice there. Let's see what you can see so I don't get... There, you see in the roof? That's my... Yeah, you saw that one in there, I'm sure. Or, uh, ceiling vent there. And then you seen that one there. And right in here is the bathroom shower. Yes, this camper does have a bathroom shower. And let's see. All right, so you saw the cupboards over here, right? There we go with the bed again. There's the fridge right there. They don't, the problem, most campers have a, what do they call a three-way fridge or a two-way. Two-way, well, let's just do it a three-way. Three-way is 110, house current, 12 volt, off the battery, and propane. 110 kicks in when you plug into shore power, what we call shore power. There's a plug outside that I'm plugged into right now. That's how that light works. This fridge runs off shore power, nothing else. Whoever put this in here wasn't thinking. So if I want to go out in the woods and go camping, I can't use this fridge. Unless I buy an $800 generator, then I can use that fridge. Or... No, that's it, because I can't do the battery thing, because it'll drain the batteries way too fast. Okay, so, let's see, we got the fridge, and we got them covers up there, there's the stove over there to the right, sink right there, and all of that works. Everything in this camper works, with the exception of a few things I'll tell you here in a second. There's the door going back outside, there's a closet right there, and there's the table, and that turns into a, oops, small bed. There you go. I've uh, got, this, I'll show you my floors, there. Wood floors, but they're not really wood floors. They're that stuff you buy, the cheap stuff you buy from Home Depot and you put in your kitchen, you know. Cheap stuff. Yeah, look at it. But I didn't put it in here. Somebody else did. Um, let's see. What was I going to say? Okay. All the lights work. The heater works. The, the water heater element works. Um, all the lights work on the outside as well as the inside. The water pump works. Um, stove works. Sink, well, kitchen, uh, fridge works. You heard about that already. Um, I got a battery in it, a 100 amp hour battery. I got solar on the roof. That all works. I produce enough charge for the battery during the day that I can use this light. That's a 12-volt light. And I have 12-volt lights everywhere. There's one right here. There's one, there's two up there in the bunk area. There's not one over here, but... Oh, and I got one over here above the, uh... Oh, come on, Jason. Dang, go. Close it. Close it. Um, so where was I? Yeah, okay, so the only thing that don't work, the only thing that don't work... Well, there's two, and I'll tell you about the second one right now. The drains. They all go out the back, like they're supposed to. But I got a drain for the sink, I got a drain for the toilet, I got a drain for the shower, I got a drain... Am I missing something? Oh, shower, toilet. What's that one over there? Oh, sink. There's a sink in there, too. There's a sink, toilet, and shower in that room right there. And other the, the, the drains just come out separate. Boom, 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 boom. They're, they're supposed to be all hooked to one pipe, and they're not. 
so that's a problem, but I can fix that. The second problem, the most important problem, is the water. Um, in fact, let's walk out there. I'll show you the tank that they used to have in here for storing water. I hope y'all like my camper. It's a Red Dale, 19, I don't know the year. It's uh, late 70s, very early 80s, like 81 maybe, 80 maybe, or 78, 78 to 81, somewhere in there. Um, so yeah, I had to replace the water tank because the one they had in there was a joke and nothing was hooked up. Um, I really feel like the people, I don't know, it's hard to believe that they would lie to me straight up because they're older than I am and not by a lot, maybe five years, but uh, just didn't seem like they were that type of people, but a lot of things sure have come across that I didn't think were going to be there, but you know, whatever, I can fix it. That tank right there, it looks like a, right there. I don't, I'm not even sure what kind of, it's like a milk tank or something, I don't know, I don't know what was in that tank originally, but that's what they had in that camper for water storage. Well, like I said, it wasn't hooked up, and it didn't look like you could hook it up. Maybe that's why it wasn't hooked up, because it didn't look like you could hook it up. So I uh, went on Amazon and bought a 20-gallon regular RV tank, it's rectangular shape, you know, plastic. It's in there now. It's all hooked up. Got a new pump, because the old pump was dragging. And uh, here, let me set you down, I'm going to take a drink of water. And uh, oh, of course, yeah, I got ready to test it, so I hooked it up to the hose out front here. And I went inside and told my wife to turn it on, and as soon as she did, it blew the water line in three places. And the water line is all brass or copper. Copper. Um, and so I gotta replace all that. Well, I'm not gonna replace it with the same stuff. They've got stuff called PEX now. So I've gotta run PEX all through there, cold water and hot water, to two sinks and a, and a water heater. Yep. No big deal. I just gotta do it, that's all. And then once I do that, and I get a generator so I can run the refrigerator, and you need a generator anyway, because if you run out of battery power for whatever reason, what are you gonna do? So you gotta have a generator with you. And I don't have a small Honda style generator. So when I said $800 and I said Honda, you guys are probably thinking, where's he getting a Honda for $800? No, I'm not buying a Honda, I'm buying a Generac. They've got one, looks just like a Honda, only a different color, but for a lot less money. So 800 bucks gets their biggest one, their most uh, energy producing one, 3,300. That'll run anything off that camper, so. That's I'm a, 800 bucks, so I'm gonna buy that. Once I buy that and get the water fixed, I'll be able to sustain myself in that camper for a weeks, because I don't drink the water. I drink this water, Ice House. But you need water for shower once in a while, or wash, even if you just wash up, you use less water that way, or just turn the shower on, get wet, and then turn it off, and then wash up, turn it on, you know, that kind of thing. But that's what that water's for, not for, and cooking, not for drinking, so. There you have it. You've seen my camper, you've seen, let's recap, right? Okay, I attempted to take that nut off. I admitted that I was using the wrong uh, battery-operated socket drive, right? Cordless socket drive by Milwaukee, M18 Fuel. Um, I admitted I was calling a half inch, a three quarter, and it wasn't a three quarter. So I, I'm an honest man, I am. I, I don't get embarrassed by it, I hate that it happens, but it, it does. There's other things, I'm ADHD, uh, a lot of things on my mind all the time. Um, that's that's my excuse. Take it or leave it. So, got the three quarter. Tried to take it off. Couldn't get it off. Heated the nut up. Still couldn't get it off. Got the uh, tool, which I can't think of the damn name of that tool, but I'll, I'll think of it. And it's a reduced. Re it, it, it basically has a reducer in it, so that you're turning a big gear, which is turning a little another smaller gear, and there's a smaller gear, smaller gear, so that you're easily. T it'll break nuts off a semi tire. It'll break them lug nuts off and, or loose. No problem. No problem. About three four turns of that thing, and they broke free. Um, Okay, so I used that tool and that didn't work. It broke my three quarter inch drive to half inch drive reducer. Um, and then I just been kind of gabbing about this and that, putting stuff away, and then I went and showed you my camper and uh, that's how it looks on my pickup truck, as you've probably seen a million times now. And it's, uh, it's a heavy one. In fact, next video, I'll mention how heavy because I've already weighed the truck before I got the camper. Now I just need to weigh the truck with the camper and I don't know how much it weighs. All, my, like, all the gear I got in my campers, I'm not putting any more in it other than water. 20 gallons at, what, eight pounds per gallon? 160 pounds. Anyway, let's call it a night, shall we? Uh, this is not the video I plan to make, but it is what it is, and uh, I hope it was somewhat entertaining, if not educational, if not something to laugh at. I don't know, man. I'm trying. I'm going to get better as we go, and uh, once the money starts coming where I can start just buying parts when I need them, there'll be more content, better content. So uh, y'all have a great night. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around to the end. You rock, and uh, we'll make a video, another video soon. Adios.